Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson from the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. Thank you also very much who have been subscribing to our channel for those of you who have been following and those of you who have been liking and those who are watching for the very first time. Welcome. We appreciate you sharing with us. It is Satisfaction Saturday, as we call it here. It's the day in which we realize that God has blessed us all week long. We're now at the last day of this week and we give him praise. Please look with me in the word of God out of the book of Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verses 10 through 13 from the New Living Translation. Plant and harvest your crops for six years, but let the land be renewed and lie uncultivated during the seventh year. Then let the poor among you harvest whatever grows on its own. Leave the rest for wild animals to eat. The same applies for your vineyards and your olive groves. You have six days each week for your ordinary work week. But on the seventh day, you must stop working. Give your ox, your donkey a chance to rest. It also allows your slaves and your foreigners to live among you and be refreshed. Pay attention to all my instructions. You must not call on the name of any other gods. Do not speak their names. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. What a powerful text. This is the text that we hear out of the book of Exodus. It's one that helps all of us to understand that uh, uh, Israel now hears some instructions from God. God tells them, what I want you to do is to rest or rejuvenate and release. Oh, in essence, take a break. So what happens in this passage, it begins to let us know that Israel was supposed to go through this rotation of planting their harvest and their crops. It lets them know that uh, for six years, you do all the harvesting of the crops, you plant, you do it all. But on the seventh, seventh year, it's a time of rest. It's a time in which we call a Sabbath rest. It's a time in which you allow the ground to rejuvenate itself. That's part of the reason why you and I can better understand how when God created all of the earth and all of the living things that were in it. God did it all on six days. And it says the seventh day, he chose it to be a day that will be set aside for rest. This became the model that many of us used in the United States and abroad, where we did all of our work six days out of the week and the seventh day was a day of rest. So this begins to let us see that this was a harvest time. And the great part about it, when all the harvesting were done for those six years, the seventh year, it was a time in which you just let things grow as they would. But it became a time that everybody basically had some time off. All of us need to have some time of rest and rejuvenation in the midst of this COVID-19 environment, in the midst of all of this racial un un unreadiness that we've seen, in the midst of this political season. All of us need a rest. Many of us are probably saying, give it a rest. Those of us who saw uh, what was uh, depicted as being a debate, many of us said, give it a rest. Many of us were saying that I need a rest from all of what I have seen. What we find out in this text, it becomes a time which those who own the land and those who harvested and those who work, everybody had a time of just kicking back, resting. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of us could see what this was about? But it was about the time that those who were the hard workers, those who labored hard, they got some time off. It became a time where people were able to rejuvenate themselves. It was also a time in which the land did not find itself being so uh, turbulently used, but it was a time that it could just rejuvenate itself. But notice what else it says in here. Use it as a time such that the animals even got rest. Isn't it amazing? If we would follow a passage like this, it would help us guide our lives. Too many times we take advantage of those who are the least among us and those who are working hard. That's part of the reason why we need to say to those who are starting to evict people who don't have jobs, give it a rest. Give them an opportunity. Give them a time to catch up and get on their feet. Those who own the property, we should consider and ask ourselves the question. We knew the business risk when we went into it. And all of us need to think about how God tells all of us, give people a break. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we would learn to give people a break? This text begins to remind us, let's take some time to just give it a break. Take some time to rest. Take some time to allow God to do a work in us. And let's use that seventh day as a time of worship. 
here at the fountain, we use that Sunday, that first day of the week, a time for worship. I hope that you will use tomorrow as a day of worship. We invite you to join us here at the fountain as we worship God. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for your prayerful support and all the things that we have done in ministry to help so many others. We thank you so very much for your generous support in times past, and we thank you for your present support and what you will do in the future. May God richly bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask, say, or think according to his power at work in you. God bless you. Okay.